Oxford Languages defines nostalgia as a sentimental longing or wistful affection for a period in the past. This innate urge for what has come before is as unusual as it is profitable. Indeed, many businesses and individuals have successfully capitalized on this phenomena, blurring the lines between nostalgic lust and their products or services. Is it any wonder that Coca-Cola has been reusing the same style of Christmas ad since 1995? I think not. Which watch is that? It's driving me nuts. Well, over the years, many wristwatch brands have taken a similar approach in an attempt to take just that little bit more from your wallet. While there are numerous examples of this, one of the more recent and successful implementers is the low-cost brand Timex. After the success of the Marlin reissue in 2017, their throwback efforts hit new heights two years later with the resurrection of the original diver-inspired Q Timex sports watch. They've since released a string of other retro models, including the experimental Falcon Eye and some more subtle models, like the one I've been trying for the last couple of weeks. This is the 1978 Day Date reissue, which appears to be a follow-up to the similarly styled 1975 reissue from a few months back with some minor alterations. I completely missed out on the latter option, so when this newer 37mm version popped up on their site, it was too tempting to ignore. Something I didn't ignore though, was the price. You see, this watch isn't exactly cheap. Sure, compared to a Rolex, £155 doesn't seem like much. However, when you look at the specifications and the basic design, that figure starts to look pretty steep. As your resident wristwatch test dummy, I thought I'd be the perfect candidate to see if this watch is hiding something special, or if you're actually paying a huge premium for a drop of that nostalgia. It's linked down below, Let's take a look. Holy moly, perhaps this tiny Timex is compensating for something as it arrived in one of the largest boxes I've ever seen. I remember being underwhelmed by the boring packaging that the Falcon Eye issue shipped in, but this is completely at the other end of the spectrum. Maybe someone at Timex watches my videos? Despite being stylish and protective, which is great, I was left slightly concerned. Has too much cash gone into this big thing rather than the watch itself? That's always a concern with low-cost watches, and it's no exception here. Straight out of the box, this undeniably looks like a vintage watch that has been teleported to the modern age. Everything from the case shape to the dial texture and domed crystal oozes late 70s style. The advantage and point of these reissue watches, I guess, are that you can obtain that retro look with the benefits of modern materials. True vintage watches being more of a risky option that could require some maintenance. This 78 has a full 360nl stainless steel case with a high polish finish exhibited across all surfaces bar the rear. The brushed and screwed case back houses the familiar battery hatch which can be easily unlocked using something like a coin. Very handy and you don't feel it during wear. While the 5 bar water resistance is a nice boon for a watch using a hatch, the overall finishing of the case is rather underwhelming. In all honesty, I think this softer style is probably accurate to the manufacturing methods of the period. However, given this has been built in the 2020s, I'd certainly have appreciated some sharper lines to give an air of quality and precision, especially when the RRP is northwards of 150 pounds. A good point of comparison would be the Nixon Time Teller I reviewed last year, which also had a retro aesthetic, but with neater and sharper edges around the case. I think something similar could have been done with this Timex to keep it looking fresher. The crown is unsigned, though is well proportioned and functions as expected. Housed atop the case is the heavily domed acrylic crystal. While not scratch proof in the slightest, it does perfectly suit the piece, providing substantial vintage style warping when viewed from an angle. The dial sitting beneath has a vertically brushed linen texture, akin to many older watches, with a predominantly silver finish that exudes a subtle champagne hue in direct sunlight. Around the perimeter, you get a selection of applied markers, including one that is shortened to reveal the day-date window. I've managed to dig up a few pictures of the original watch, and as a whole, the execution is very, very similar. The windows are larger and more divided on the original, with the indices also bearing distinct machined ridges, rather than the brushed surface present on this reissue. The crown is also slightly smaller on the vintage watch, but aside from that, you'd be hard-pressed to notice any differences between the two. The baton handset is identical, and the text size and placement is true to the original as well. 
it's undeniable that Timex has done a great job of fully capturing the essence of the period, something that the Invicta that I recently covered failed to accomplish. When on the wrist, not only is the day date comfortable, but it's almost indistinguishable from a true vintage watch. As such, it is on the small side for most wrists at 37.5mm wide and with a lug to lug of just 43mm. It fits my skinny wrist very well and the chunky 12.5mm depth is a non-issue as half of it is comprised of the dome crystal and battery hatch alone. As such, it sits much better than you might expect from just reading the spec sheet. Unfortunately, something that I didn't expect was the rubbish strap. While this black genuine leather two-piece may look nice, unfortunately, it is unequivocally a piece of garbage. Within a couple of weeks, it's already started to show heavy warping increasing to the extent where I anticipate the layers will start to fragment in the not too distant future. The buckle isn't even signed and for a £155 watch, it feels like they have completely cheapened out. The only thing the quick release spring bars are useful for here is removing the strap and binning it. There's something I don't quite understand. Why this model? Why revive this random 1978 day date in particular? You see, I can appreciate why they brought back the sweet looking sports models and especially the vibrant wave dialed Falcon Eye. In contrast though, this watch just doesn't seem quite so special or unique. I'm sure some of you out there are gonna love it, yet I can't help but feel it's a little vanilla. It does offer up that true vintage look with some benefits like the quieter tick and fresh components leading to a longer lifespan. But £155? Really? While the watch may deliver what it promises, I couldn't justify such a bloated asking price for this very basic watch. After all, the specifications are nothing impressive, it doesn't look as good as the other Q models, and the strap is even worse than those hair ripping bracelets too. Not to mention, you can grab an array of actual vintage watches offering a very, very similar look for a fraction of that price. At the moment, they have a 25% off code on the Timex website, bringing this down to a more reasonable £116. Nevertheless, I know they can do better because they already offer the similarly cased Milano XL 38mm for £50 less, which comes with a more scratch resistant crystal and a decent solid link bracelet to boot. Sure, the dial is simpler and overall it doesn't look quite so retro, though I think it still highlights how a big chunk of your cash is, as I suspected, going into nostalgia marketing with this 78 reissue rather than into the watch itself. If this were priced similarly to that Milano, it would have got a nod from me, but for this much money, it's not getting my seal of approval. If you like the premise of this one, I'd hang on until it's on some sort of heavy discount before pulling the trigger. I'll link all of the watches mentioned in the video description, alongside a link to my Patreon if you'd like to support my consumer-focused reviews like the lovely people on screen have already done. You'll also get access to some of these videos early. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.